An argument you're going to hear quite often is on the world poverty reduction and there's a YouTuber called Hakim who argues that the rich have been getting richer and the poor have been getting poorer. It's basically to say that this is all capitalism's fault, therefore we need to usher in socialism to solve this problem. According to the World Bank, the governments of wealthy countries and the UN, that the world is getting better and better, and it's all thanks to capitalism and Western aid. They colored their speeches with cozy words and nice sounding rhetoric, but it's just that, rhetoric. Poverty worldwide has not been decreasing, and in fact, evidence shows that it's been actually increasing. For the purpose of this argument, I could go on and speak about why this is the complete opposite of the truth and why socialism just is catastrophic and leads to the opposite. However, for my argument, I'm going to, you know, point out the very data that contradicts his argument to prove that the rich have been getting richer and the poor have actually been getting richer. And that's not bad given the very fact that, the, you know, the world's population today are living under mixed economies and not living under free market economies. First of all, the definition of poverty has been changed in a way that serves this poverty reduction narrative. The threshold of poverty, which is the poverty line, is normally calculated by each nation for itself, and it's supposed to represent what an adult needs to get by in every respective nation. In 1990, Martin Ravelian, an Australian economist at the World Bank, noticed that the poverty lines of a group of the world's poorest countries clustered around $1 per day. On Ravelian's recommendation, the World Bank adopted this as the first ever international poverty line. Using this threshold, the World Bank announced in its annual report in the year 2000 that the absolute number of those living on $1 per day or less continues to increase. The worldwide total rose from 1.2 billion in 1987 to 1.5 billion today and if recent trends persist, will reach 1.9 billion by 2015. Just as soon as this horrific news came out, they flip-flopped on their position and said this, while poverty has been increasing steadily for some two centuries, the introduction of free market policies has actually reduced the number of impoverished people by 400 million between 1981 and 2001. Wow, how ideologically convenient. So if we were to take a look at this data, what we will see is that the number of people who are in extreme poverty since 1820 had been on the increase right up to about the 1970s. Now the reason for this is, as a whole is because the world's population had continuously increased over that time period but what you will also see from that data is that the number of people not in extreme poverty continuously increased. So from about the 1950s to the 1970s you will see a sharp increase that's on an unprecedented level and yet from the 1970s you would see a decline of those in extreme poverty. That's because the poor have been gradually been getting richer and they've been moving up the ladder. Now if we were to look at wealth measurement as a whole, we would look at things like your life expectancy, your material wealth as a whole, your living conditions and working hours etc etc. Now Contrasting before the Industrial Revolution to after the Industrial Revolution, you will actually find that the rich got richer and poor get richer. I've pointed out information on that before. Even if we look at this data, you will see that from the 1820s, when more than 80% of the world's population was sitting on less than $1 per day, well, you look at the vast decrease of that. Most of the world are now earning above that. They came out of the extreme poverty bracket. Even I could argue that the African continent today as a whole is actually richer than what it was of the 18th century. Why? Because today people have electricity, which was non-existent in those days. Another thing that you would look at is that, you know, many of these African countries actually have medicine that was not present in those days. So there is, to a degree, um, better material wealth in the African countries. Now, I acknowledge the fact that yes, sadly, the African countries are going in the opposite direction, implementing more and more socialism, not capitalism, more and more socialism that's causing them to get poorer. 
But if we were to look at the world's population as a whole, and what I'll do is I'll link sources in the description area below where you can go and check out the information for yourself. But even as Robert P. Murphy describes, he basically points out the very fact that King Louis XIV never even had flushing toilets. Now this is the thing, because you contrast that to the average poor people today, people actually do have toilets. There's a very big difference between the world's population today to that of the King of France. It was even said that he stared down in his wine glass that had frozen over in a terrible winter of 1695. More data that we can look at that contradicts Hakim's argument is this. As we can see that since the 18th century, throughout the Industrial Revolution, right up to this very date, we can see that the poor have actually been getting richer as a whole across the world right up to the year 2000 from this data. Now one only has to look at that of China and the data of China. Have a look at this. As quoted, according to the World Bank's estimates in 1981, over 88% of people in China lived in extreme poverty. At that time that was about 878 million people, which you may notice is about 100 million more than that of the number of the entire world in 2013. After 1981, extreme poverty fell rapidly in China to 61% in 1987, 41% in 1999, 15% in 2008, and just 1.85% in 2013. Amazing. More data that we can look at that proves the very point that economic freedom was responsible for why people are living better off today and why there was such unprecedented economic growth and prosperity for people. You can just take a look at this graph. As we can see from this graph, if we look at that of the least free to that of the most free, we can see that those least free are far worse off than those are most free. Also, you will notice there's very little difference between extreme poverty and moderate poverty, whereas if you were to contrast that to the least free, you will see there's a very big difference between the extreme and moderate. Now, it just so happens to be those living least free are those living in the very socialist countries that he wants. Of course, subconsciously, he ends up supporting that type of thing. That's where socialism always leads. It never leads in the road towards that of, you know, anything prosperous or even free. It was thanks to capitalism and the economic liberty that enabled people to vastly increase their material standards of wealth, etc. The life expectancy vastly improved um, as a whole. And not to forget the very fact that, as I said, the working hours, they were working more than 80 hours per week. Well, if you were to look at this graph, you will see that the working hours had been vastly decreasing throughout the 20th century. And again, that was all thanks to capitalism. If you were to look at people today, they have far more time on their hands. You know, they have that luxury, they even have luxury to watch television, etc. And even Hakim has a computer, he has the luxury to produce videos for you. He has the luxury in his own free time to do these things because of what capitalism had done. Whereas, if you were to move in the direction of socialism, you'd be working endless hours for such little pay. The very arguments that he tries to blame on capitalism which just isn't the case. So anyway, folk, if you've got any questions that you would like to ask, comment in the comment section below. If you found this video informative, please give the video a thumbs up. And of course, share the video, favourite the video. And of course, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.